When it comes to safety, we all take plenty of precautions. We install fire and smoke alarms in our houses, choose cars with more airbags and even look three times before crossing the road. But what about electrical safety? Would you know what to do, say if you came across a downed power line or a car involved in an accident with a stobie pole? All good questions that need equally good answers. And I think we might be shocked by what we don't know. An ideal person to talk to about electrical community safety is SA Power Network's Manager of Corporate Affairs, Paul Roberts. We all rely on power so much these days, but it's also at times to be starting to think about being a little bit more cautious and perhaps we're not aware of some of the issues around the supply going down our streets in our suburbs and around our homes. 80% of our network is above ground. So these lines above the three lines, they're the 11,000 volt lines and then underneath of the 240 volt lines, which obviously go to all the homes in the area. And you can actually see here that we've pruned the trees to the level for the 11,000 volt lines that are above. Where they're combined like that, we have to do that. And if there wasn't the 11,000 volt line above? The trees would be allowed to grow through those 240 volt lines where we're taking a risk-based approach in a major event where we have gusting winds 80, 90 kilometres an hour, it will bring down tree branches and even trees, and they do fall long distances and fall across lines. And that's when you're at risk. The issue for stobie poles is they are along the sides of roads in the metropolitan area, particularly and in the country, and they are a risk in terms of vehicle accidents. So if somebody does unfortunately hit one of these, what should they do? Well, they should never assume that it's safe. Uh, it could have dislodged a line even above, even if a line hasn't come down to the ground, there could be a line sitting on the cross arm at the top of the pole. So best to stay in your car and call the police and SA Power Networks and we'll come and make sure and confirm that the line is actually safe and it's safe to get out of your vehicle. If you're a bystander and you see somebody in a vehicle that had hit a pole, what should you do? Same rules, stay well back, don't try and go to the vehicle and open it. Paul, how far away from a down power line should you be? Well, take this tape measure and let's have a look. Okay. Two metres? No, no, keep going, Kim. Oh, five. No, keep going. Ten here. That's how far you have to be from a power line to be safe. Wow, that's a long way. It is, but it's a really important thing to do. What about safety inside the home? What should we be looking for? Tingles or zaps from taps. That's a sign there's something wrong with the electrical wiring, either inside the home or perhaps with a neutral connection from the network. Absolutely essential that they call us immediately or their electrician to get it looked at. We were really keen to get an understanding of what people knew about safety around electricity and power lines. So we did some research and that really showed us that while people thought some of what they knew was common sense. They didn't actually really know what to do in really serious situations. We're doing a campaign to really get the message out to people about staying 10 metres from down power lines and staying in the vehicle if they're in an accident. Using a whole lot of media channels, including billboards, a big bus. A bus is about 10 metres long, so it's the perfect thing to think about when you think about how close can I go to that down power line. Well, if people want to know more about electrical safety, what can they do? Best thing to do is actually go to the SA Power Network's website and we've got a lot of information there about safety in the home but also obviously safety around the distribution network that we manage.